Very exciting news, everyone. I just acquired this old door from my friend Al. It was the front door of an old cabin on his property many decades ago. And the last time I was visiting him, I was telling him about how I want to make a custom front door here at my off-grid cabin. And he was like, hey, I might have a door that you would be interested in. So he showed me this one and it is perfect. Like I, this is the exact type of door that I was trying to create. I wanted to make a retro looking door, but it's really hard to create the aesthetic of age. And there's really only one way to do it authentically. And that is to have or gain possession of a door just like this. So this door is made of old cedar and it's a true two inches. And I'm going to try my best to bring this thing back to life and then install it as the new front door of the cabin here. I'm so excited to start this project. First thing I'm gonna do is just brush it off and expose some of this natural wood. I wanna sand down the metal, get rid of that rust and I'm gonna repaint the metal. I've never refinished an old door, so I'm just gonna go with the flow and do what I think is right, and we'll see what happens. never used one of these before. Picked it up from the hardware store. Looked like it would work pretty well for this application here. Looks like one battery per side of the door. Okay, now it is time to prepare this metal for paint. All right, I got all the metal taped off here and ready for paint. Nothing too fancy here, just a rattle can. And we're gonna see how it looks after one layer.
gonna try and speed up the drying process here a bit because I'm impatient. All right, coat number two coming up. So I'm thinking two coats ought to do here. Any more would probably make this paint look super thick on that metal. So I am ready to take this Tyvek off of here. Nice. I like it. Glad I did that. I was considering just leaving that looking kind of rustic, but I'm happy with my decision. And I'm going to apply some protection on the cedar boards themselves because I have this can of wood protector and I figured I might as well use it. Um, that door might be okay. Without it, it's not gonna be exposed to the weather, but I have this, so hey, let's put it on there. It can't hurt, right? I think. This stuff is like water, so hopefully it doesn't like flake off eventually. That's the worst case scenario I think you know I was saying it couldn't hurt but that would be an event where it would hurt because it would just flake and fall off and then it would be like a waste of time but um, as long as it soaks in and cedar is pretty soft so I'm thinking it'll soak in pretty well everybody I made a trip to Home Depot and bought a bunch of goodies to try and finish this door project before I went to Home Depot I did a lot of standing and staring and contemplating try and make sure I thought of every aspect of this door I'm trying to make sure I got all of the proper materials we'll see if I forgot anything here shortly but what I'm going to do is replace that door. Obviously that's what I've been planning on doing from the beginning, but I thought I may have to reframe that wall in order to replace the door, but I don't. This door is 36 inches wide. And then one I got from Al is 33 inches. So all I have to do is actually narrow up this opening and trim the top and the bottom of the door and it will fit right in place, which is fantastic. <laughs> or so I think. I'm a little nervous as I always am, but, uh... Let's see how this turns out. So I think the term is furred. I don't know where that comes from. I don't know if that's correct, but I think I have furred out this door, meaning I put these pieces in here to make this flush. So right now that gap is 36 and a quarter inches. 
So when I put a piece of wood here, that's an inch and a half, and a piece of wood here, that's an inch and a half, that will narrow up the doorway and Al's door should fit right in there. Well, that was loud. So each one of those that I just ripped needed to be four and a quarter, and now they're four and a quarter. Now I have to cut them to the proper length, which is 79 and a half. All right, those fit in there, but I'm not gonna screw them or fasten them in place yet because I need to figure out the door deadbolt and uh, the other part. Oh. All right, now I'm going to work on cutting this thing down to size. I need to flip it over. And I'm going to want to make it 79 inches. So it's not as easy as just chopping one end off, or maybe it is, but <laughs> I want to look at where these brackets lie in relation to the hinges and uh, make sure I'm happy with how much of each end I cut off before I actually pull the trigger on the saw. That smells so good. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. There's one side. Now I gotta cut the other. All right, this seems as good a time as ever to install this. So this is meant for doors that are like that one that are inch and three quarter. This one's exactly two inches wide, so it doesn't fit over like it should. So I'm gonna try to make a saw mark right here and just slip this in like a sleeve and then screw it in. Never done this before. I figure if this doesn't work, I'll just have a line right there that nobody will ever see. And I'll just figure out another solution for a way to insulate the bottom of the door if this doesn't work. Nice, I think that'll work. Like I said, I've never done that before, but that's one way to put uh, whatever this is called, under door seal. That's one way to put those on if your door is a little bit too big for that. I think that worked out pretty well. And actually there's an area here where I can put screws. I think I'm gonna put a few. That way this won't have a reason to wanna come back that way. All right, those are done. Very nice. All right, well, I just found out that this door handle set that I bought is not made to fit a door this thick. It just simply will not work. So I'm gonna have to figure out something else for a latch. I'm realizing that <clears throat> the sun is going down and if I don't put this door in there tonight, I won't have a door on the cabin so <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of cold air going inside and possibly wild animals can just like enter if they want to so i need to put this door in place 
before it's ready to be completely finished. So there's a lot more that I have to do. Obviously, that it has a hole here, which uh, I don't know what's about to happen, but I'm gonna make some stuff happen real quick tonight. You're about to find out what that is. <laughs> All right, you guys, I am so happy right now. Oh my gosh, this door, it's so awesome. It's so awesome. This is so, like, I'm gonna have to fix that. Or maybe I won't fix it because it sounds kind of cool. <laughs> but man, this, this worked out so perfect. The length that I made it, this seals so great on the top and the bottom. And it shuts just, oh my gosh. And it looks so cool. It's not even done yet. Yeah, check it out. It's just, oh my goodness. Those bolts hit right there, so I gotta carve that out so the door can swing all the way open. I'm so happy, I'm so happy right now. Look at this. Look at it. Oh my gosh. That'll get the job done for tonight. See you tomorrow. Okay, that method works great, but be careful with your chisels, people, because oh, I just did something really stupid. I was just doing it by hand, and I pushed really hard, and the wood gave way, and I had my hand right here, and I stabbed the crap out of my thumb. Whew, not good. Oh, I'm gonna wrap this up and keep going, but careful with your chisels. This might work without having to chisel this out. Let's see. I used this rope that I got from Home Depot as an aesthetic piece when I built my tiny house. And my mom taught me that you gotta cut it to length, but then that loosens the end of the rope. So to prevent it from coming apart in the future, you can peel your excess into little strips and then use that to tie off the ends and tighten it up. So this glue is gonna act as an insulator to fill that gap and for adhesive to attach the rope 
into the wood of the door. All right, at this stage, I'm realizing that it's gonna be easiest to finish this whole thing if I put the door back in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. so glad when I don't have to move this door anymore. It's so heavy. <laughs> all right, I got that all trimmed out on both sides. I did this thing where I stood at the edge of the door like this and I tapped with my hammer on this side, tapped with my hammer on this side because the door is two inches thick and these are three quarters inch. So they, stick over a little bit on each side, but it ended up looking pretty good. So this is my signature tree that I made a couple years ago when I built the deck. This is the original template that I used. I wanna cut out a tree and put it in the center of the door, but the template is a little bit too big. I'm going to freehand a brand new tree and we'll see how that goes. Folks, well, it's hard to beat an original, but I think that's pretty cool. See, it's smaller and a bit less detailed, but that's what I had to do to make it fit in this space. Oh man, I love it. Now I know what the ladies are gonna say. Diego, those trees that you made, those are so cute. I love those. But I understand, sometimes you can't help yourself. But I would prefer if you came up and saw these for the first time, you would say, Oh my gosh, Diego, those trees that you cut out, those are so rugged and manly. I just love the masculinity that those trees portray. Or something like, my goodness, whoever cut those trees out probably has the strength to carry the weight of the world on their shoulders. Next step is to put this door sealer thing. I'm not sure what it's called, but I think it's gonna work really well along the door like this. And then I'll have a piece of trim out there that will squish against this and it'll seal the sides of the door when it closes. All right, there's that seal along there. Just gotta do the other side now.
One of the finishing touches to this door is going to be putting a handle on it. And I got this awesome piece of wood from Al. Aged. Oh. <laughs> he had a bunch of old stuff like this that he kept for somebody to use and I found this one and I think it's gonna make for a great door handle. I sanded down the ends so it sits nice and flat on a flat surface so I'm just gonna use a Forstner bit to prepare this screw head to kind of sink in there on each end and go through as far into that cedar of the door as much as possible so that it will hold tight and be nice and sturdy on that door. screws stuck through a little bit now you can't tell that's pretty cool this side's gonna be a little bit trickier because I got this metal to go through so I'm gonna make some marks and then drill holes through the metal first and then the screws can go through those holes oh yeah it's sturdy Aww. Look at that. Ha! Mmm. Oh, man. What a feeling. There is one more thing I want to do, and that is to create a latch here. Just something really simple. It's like a barn door latch or something because right now the door doesn't actually latch unless you put the key in here, pull the door shut, and lock the deadbolt. But I don't want to keep a key in here all the time, so I'm just going to install a latch that will act as something that will keep the door closed. On the inside, this is the latch. So that keeps it sealed nice and tight. And boy, let me tell you, the seal works really well all the way around. So again, this strip right here, it's got a little spring to it. It's got cushion. And when you close the door, it hits this trim piece right here. And that provides a seal all the way along that side of the door. And then on this side, I stapled it here that acts in kind of the opposite direction it bends that way on this piece of trim right here and you can see how that provides a seal that fits right in that gap there so that's how it's sealed on the two sides and then you saw me install these on the top and the bottom so you can watch that insulate that top so no air is getting in there and then on the bottom you can watch that seal no air is getting in there and my handles ended up working out pretty great those handles that Al provided me I cut this one off a little bit short it was really long here so I cut it short and I gave it a good sanding and I think that looks pretty cool now and then on this one you can either grab from the top I'm finding myself grabbing from the top more than I do from right here but there's like a natural groove for a human thumb to fit right here and for your fingers to fit right here it's like that piece of wood was meant to work as a handrail <laughs> so I intentionally placed this where the the deadbolt goes in the wall to be a little bit tight because I want there to be a good seal on this all the way around the door so you gotta apply some pressure on the handle and then lock it and take it out there was blood there was sweat there were no tears but a lot of effort <laughs> went into this door and in conclusion I just want to say that 
None of this was by the book. There is no book for getting an ancient door from your friend Al and putting it in place of a regular door that is made uh, for regular houses. Like there's just no blueprint for doing that. So I just believed in my abilities to problem solve and there's so many resources out there on the internet for me and you and anybody to do stuff like this. So challenge yourself and believe in your ability to create something like this because you can do it. If I can do it, you can certainly do it. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.